Hello, you're watching the Light Novel Street video series on the theology of the body. This video is dedicated to audience 30. We are your hosts. I am Jeremy Hossotter. And I'm Guillermo Moreno. All right. So in the 29th audience, we introduced a concept of the insatiability of the conjugal union. And we are going to develop this theme further. So Genesis chapter three, verse 16, the new situation of shame requires us to analyze the entirety of the text of Genesis three. And this might seem like an obvious statement because, well, that's the entire chapter. You should look at it for the entire context of verse 16. But it actually is something that needs to be said. Because we've talked about this before, but there's a theory called the documentary hypothesis that suggests that the book of Genesis is written by four or five different authors or even more. And what happens then is some people believe that the text of the Bible, like different parts of different chapters even, are written by different authors. And so you get some people that would claim that, well, maybe this part of Genesis 3 is written by one author and another part's written by another author. So you can't really look at the whole, but such is really the rationalizations of some interesting biblical scholars we've talked about this a little bit in one of the early audiences about audience two or three if you're interested do you remember which audience that was guillermo i do not sorry about that okay yeah i forget too but that is kind of one of those things sometimes jp2 is making a statement about something that seems rather obvious but within some circles of academia, it actually is not that obvious. Interesting. Um, a good resource on the documentary hypothesis is John Bergsma's Catholic Introduction to the Old Testament. It has a lot of great information in there and I cannot recommend that book enough. I think this is probably the third or fourth time we've recommended that book so far in this series on Guillermo. Yes, it is. I it, it is the third. Oh, it if is. If I recall correctly, if I if yeah, if I recall correctly as well. Okay, so it's at least the third. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, that, I guess that really says something to recommend it at least three times in one series. Absolutely, and one thing that I want to emphasize is how it's it's a huge book. It is a huge book, yeah. There's just, there's just so much jam-packed in there. You have one priceless source at your um, uh, yeah, in your possession. Yeah, it is a remarkable book. It is. It's worth it even if it's a hundred dollars. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the few books I would say, yes, it's probably worth spending $100 on if it is a $100 book. I think it's only like a $50 book or 40 Something like that. I, yeah, something like that. It's hard to justify most books at that price, but this is one of those books I would say. If you have money just laying around for a good book, probably get this one. Mm -hmm. I got a few books that are expensive, and that's probably the one I would say offhand to get i yeah. i i highly recommend it as well yeah mm -hmm. All right. and just, yeah, just real quick i'm oh, curious ahead, if yeah. you've read the whole thing me yes you you know the funny thing is i've only read parts of it okay i, I read the whole actually thing. sat down and read the whole thing yeah i i read the whole thing i, okay. I yeah no it's yeah. priceless i I've read some of it like six or seven years ago, long before it was published, because nice. Dr. Bergsma used it in some of his classes as part of the base text to help supplement. 
Did you have Dr. Bergson more than once? Yeah. Oh, awesome. I only had him once. Yeah, I had him for Biblical Foundations, um, Old Testament, and then a full year of Hebrew. Yeah, I sat somewhere behind you in Biblical Foundations. Okay, enough <laughs> reminiscing. All right, Genesis 3.16, begin quote. Your desire shall be for your husband, but he will dominate you, end quote. So we're going to focus on this text here because this text is going to be part of our biblical evidence for the insatiability of the conjugal union. And just some general observations, we can see that this verse is future oriented or orientated because it's your desire shall be for your husband and he will dominate you right so this is a verse that's looking to the future and in fact it's looking to the future of all future human relationships the entirety of human history because this is a verse that began with the first woman so it's a verse that is first addressed to eve but it's also addressed to every single woman in history except for mary but that's a side thing we should not get into from the algae body except mary now a fact that become or a fact that becomes clearer yeah so this desire and this dominance is something that becomes clear in the inner historical or the inner experience of historical man historical man is every single one of us all of humanity after original sin so that includes adam and eve after they ate the fruit all the way to modernity and the future now this is a reduction of woman in comparison to man you shall desire your husband but he will dominate you now contrary to what the social justice warriors may say we are not to interpret this as social inequality rather it's to be interpreted as a lack of full unity that was originally present in original innocence so we're not to interpret this as a statement of a patriarchal dominance over quote, quote, the weaker sex, end quote, or it's not taking this kind of machoism view, but JP2 wants to emphasize that this text, it's not about kind of the feminist critique of the patriarchy, but the fact that now you have a metaphysical change in this union of persons between the man and the woman. And the woman feels this lack of full unity. And she feels this in a very special way that's particular to her and femininity. We can also observe now that this is the first time that man is defined as husband. So let's see. This text indicates a fundamental loss of the original communion of persons as the ground for man's happiness through the disinterested gift of self. This is how we need to be thinking about the text as a loss of the happiness found in the original communion of persons. Now, so this original union is deformed in the heart of man through concupiscence. So it, the fruit of concupiscence includes this desire for the husband and his dominance over the woman. And JP2 is going to develop this more. So we talked about in the previous audience, a opposition between the sexes. And so man and woman are now set against each other because of his masculinity and her femininity. This is an estrangement 
from the body as the source of the conjugal union, as the substratum for the communion of persons. So each, the man and woman, are now set against each other on the basis of the body and the body's masculinity or femininity. Now, an important point here is that the text does not speak of total destruction or the exclusion from this conjugal union that was originally willed by God that the first man and woman experienced in this state of original innocence. But it indicates that now there's a new alternative direction for conjugal expression. And this new direction is proper to the man of concupiscence. And it's a deviation of God's original vision. So the man and woman are now threatened by the insatiability of the union. And this insatiability is the new alternative direction of the conjugal union. So this sexual shame found in the text Genesis 3 has its deeper meaning in the failure to satisfy the aspiration to realize the conjugal union. So the conjugal union is to realize this aspiration for communion. And now, because of original innocence, there's a sort of failure and we have this problem of sexual shame. And so the satisfaction, the failure to reach a satisfaction leads to insatiability. Um, Guillermo, is there yes. anything you would like to add at this point? Yes, I do. I'm just reflecting on the term insatiability because building off of our fallen humanity and our distorted experience of sexuality I just want to point out that, yes, we're made for communion. Yes, we're made for love. And that's what we're really yearning for. Part of the distortion is thinking that a human person is going to uh, satisfy these needs for us, quote unquote, or is going to meet that um, level for satisfaction. Here's kind of what I mean by that, especially building off of uh, Genesis 3.16, where interestingly, it says your, your desire will be for your man. Let's see. Well, what does it say? Yeah, let me go back. Please. There you are. Yeah. Your desire shall be for your husband. I want to uh, touch on. I want to mention the way raw attraction happens between the sexes of course um it's not exclusively one or the other but overwhelmingly for men it's a physical visual attraction for women it's more of a behavioral and emotional one emotional attraction and emotional attachment that's a little more challenging to to overcome which is um this just speaks volumes to me about how women's experience of our fallen sexuality not that men don't experience this but men do have emotional attachments but um overwhelmingly it's more physical or visual and then but he will dominate you yeah that's not the point and also this insatiability it's been there it's going to be there in this life but the way that just certain ideologies from the sexual revolution, look at how far they've gone. They've gone to the point of trying to meet this insatiability by just going to the point of legislating abortion. Look, you, you we're trying to meet this need. Let's just binge and binge and binge and we'll deal with the consequences however we see fit. And look at the damage it's done. Yeah. Wow. I think another 
another way of seeing this insatiability mm. is the fetish the fetishization of things. We fetishize over different things. Like some people are like, of oh, course. I have a foot fetish, or you know, every part of the body is now a fetish of some kind. Or how some people are like, oh, well, I like it when she dresses up as a nurse. Or yes, something. yes, something or, so accidental. Or you got the masochism, the sadism, the sexual, the de- sexual delight through being whipped. I mean you slowly just over time lose sight of the reality of the conjugal act through seeking sexual pleasure itself. And so that leads to trying to find new ways of obtaining that. And that's also you where you get into the modern deep dark web of all sorts of terrible sure. slang. I mean, there's a reason why there's a website called Urban Dictionary. And if you don't understand something, you go there and then you pour bleach on your eyes trying to burn that out. Don't do that, by the way. Just to be clear, I'm not recommending you to actually pour bleach. But just what people do today to try and obtain sexual pleasure And you see it in movies, too, because when you look at movies from the 70s, being a fornicator was the edgy thing. Being an adulterer was the edgy thing. But as things progress, as time progress, you you get more edgier behavior. Boundaries are pushed. You get homosexual activity you get lesbian activity and today you get all sorts of weird things it gets worse it just gets worse yes like there were for a little while i was watching a tv show i think it was called gotham it was all about like batman in his early days it was it was very well written i was enjoying it but it just got weird dark and depressing and i just quit watching because it's not spiritually healthy for you to watch things like that and just one to think one scene i don't even know how to begin describing it because it was so bizarre the sexual perversion that people were doing i mean you had one guy that was dressed up as like a baby milk bottle i mean what is that it was just weird. But that is what insatiability leads to when you pursue it for its own sake and you slowly lose yourself. You detach yourself from reality. And that's the problem that JB2 is trying to bring us to is returning us to reality. Awesome. Did you have um anything else you wanted to add, Guillermo? No, that would that's it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a important thing is just a, real life examples of what it is we're talking about. You know, it's yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and scoop forward. Shame and concupiscence. So sexual shame introduces the threefold concupiscence, which are defined in 1 John chapter 2. That's the concupiscence of the flesh, concupiscence of the eyes, and the pride of life. And this domination, the domination that the man will have over the woman is a concupiscence as the pride of life, this domination signifies a change in the structure of the community of persons, and it makes an object out of the person. The woman becomes an object concupis- concupiscible for the man's eyes. So this domination of the husband is by no means a good thing. It's a bad thing. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible way to treat a woman. 
And when a man treats a woman in this manner, it is from concupiscence. And it is this unhinged insatiability of the conjugal union. And to be clear, this is also something a woman can do to a man, not, not in the same manner in terms of the domination aspect, but she can, I guess, yeah. I'm just thinking now, if, yeah. A woman can certainly have a similar domination over man where she too has this kind of pride and of dominating over the man of um, making him an object concupiscible for her eyes. So there's that appropriation and say manipulation. Yeah, this theme of appropriation is something we're gonna get into with future audiences. Yeah, but yes, manipulation and use being there used by the other person all right did you have anything else that guillermo no i do not okay in that case thank you for watching our video if you've been enjoying our content please subscribe to our social media like share and comment please consider making a financial donation your donations go towards the maintenance of our website and the purchase of resources for us to continue our research and to provide you with great material speaking of great material you can if you check out our website we have many awesome articles there for you and a podcast Guillermo can you give us more information about our podcast yes now on our other podcast series we talk about other topics always from a catholic personalist perspective we talk about things such as trends in culture and politics. We upload our episodes onto buzzsprout.com. You can listen to us directly there and find the link to our page on Buzzsprout on the Lenovo Esprit website. You can also use Buzzsprout to access other uh, our pages on other platforms for podcasts, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. In case you're wondering where all of our social media is, you can go to lesnovelesprit.com slash subscribe. Check out all of our social media profiles and you can find there everywhere we have our podcast distributed. Um, any last words, Guillermo? I would just like to ask our viewers and listeners to keep us in your prayers, to keep us and our mission in your prayers. Yes, please continue to pray for us. And with that, I am going to say goodbye. Bye, everyone. God bless.